us to watch the news at 10 on Channel Television. A reminder of our top stories. The federal government removes special assistant to the president on prosecutions of Kwai Obonobla as head of its special investigation panel on recovery of public properties. The Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai inaugurates a peace commission towards achieving lasting peace in the state. Commuters flying the Oweri Okigwe Road in Imo State seek federal government intervention in the repairs of the dilapidated road. And a gunman attack at the local church in Texas, United States, leaves at least 27 people dead. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our websites, channelstv.com and youtube.com slash channelsweb. You can also watch us on the go on a mobile device, log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature, so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Uh, you sent in some pictures, so let's take a look at some of them, shall we? We begin with this one. It's a set of images from Isheri Magudu area of Lagos State. We see students whom our eyewitness reporter says are members of a press club during a performance on the assembly ground. Our reporter who sent this in says he's impressed with this activity by the school children and encourages schools to organize creative ways of teaching beyond the traditional classroom. We're still in Lagos with this next picture. We see a set of pictures, actually, from Akowonjo area of the state. Uh, vehicles driving through a flooded road, which, according to our eyewitness reporter, resulted from the downpour, I suppose, earlier in the day. He suggests improvement on drainages as a solution to such incidents. Our final image is from Wari in Delta State, showing gas flaring, which our eyewitness reporter says is air pollutant. He's worried about the long-term implications this will result in, especially as it concerns health. He calls for quick action from the government. Thank you for sending in those pictures and please keep them coming. Records of how 35 states spent over 388 billion naira London and Paris Club loan refunds released by the federal government are confidential and therefore cannot be made public. And that's what the federal government, through the Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, is telling the federal high court sitting in Lagos. According to Haji Idris, the Paris Club refund, meant to pay overdue pensioners' entitlements and workers' salaries, is protected by professional privilege and therefore confidential. The federal government was responding to the suit filed by Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Projects, SERAP, seeking an order of mandamus directing the government to publish details of how the refunds were spent. SERAP, in a statement, however, challenged the Accountant General's position in a statement which reads, in part, the Accountant General owes no duty of confidence to the 35 states, but rather to the entire citizens of Nigeria. Disclosure will not constitute an actionable breach of confidence if there is a public interest in disclosure which outweighs the public interest in keeping the information confidential. End of quote. The 35 states have been accused of allegedly diverting and mismanaging, mismanaging the London and Paris Club Fund. Justice Muslim Hassan had in June 2017 ruled that Sarab could proceed with a legal challenge to unravel how exactly 35 states spent the Paris Club loan refunds. There's some issues surrounding health. Now there are growing concerns over the negative effects of cannabis, otherwise known as marijuana, on the lives of young Nigerians in Niger State. This is as the National Drug Enforcement Agency in the state seized over two tons of the substance in less than two weeks. And the state's social rehabilitation center says increasing case use psychosis are being recorded. Our next report takes a look at efforts to tackle the burden of substance abuse with its attendant health, social and economic implications. 
The nutritional value of vegetables and leaves offers many health benefits, including reduced risk of chronic diseases and other medical conditions, but not these dried cannabis leaves. The plant, also known as marijuana, is widely abused by a psychotropic substance, especially by youths in the country, despite being illegal. Continuous surveillance by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency leads the mass seizure and destruction of substance on a regular basis. In 2014, the World Drug Report by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime put Nigeria as having the highest rate of cannabis seizures. In spite of legislation and security measures in place, the abuse and cultivation of cannabis for monetary gains continues to gain momentum in several states. In Niger State, a transit point in north-central Nigeria, the law enforcement agencies up in the ante, especially this period being a peak harvest season for the growers. All we did was to ensure that my men do more of the patrol. And because if they do more of the patrol, it will save us the having to go to joints to seize, make arrests and seize. And even if you get to the joint to make arrests and seize, what is the quantity you can get? It can't be compared to this ton. So I had to put uh, machinery on ground to ensure that we catch them when they are carrying in bulk. Niger state is among several states in the country plagued by the activities of cannabis traffickers. The state has in recent times witnessed an upsurge in trafficking, mostly from neighboring states including Kwara, Kaduna, Kebi, Zamfara, Kogi and the federal capital territory Abuja. Regular abuse of the plants causes a wide range of medical and psychological effects such as behavioral changes, anxiety, addiction, irritability, poor memory, poor coordination, insomnia, hallucinations, paranoia, panic attacks and a high rate of heart attacks among others. This is a source of worry for residents of the state. It's a very dangerous attitude that is doing bad or harm to the health of our young youths. And I want to attribute this to the to idleness, influence, environment, where you live, the people you walk around with. The growing trend of drug addiction is reflected in the number of drug-induced psychosis cases at the Social Rehabilitation Center located in Mina, the state capital. Every day we receive cases about 10 to 20 patients coming in with the history of DIP. DIP means drugs-induced psychosis. There are those patients or be clients that used to take substances like India hemp, cigarettes, tramal, even hot and other substances. So we are advising people they should stop taking all these things. As the fight to rid Nigeria of narcotics trafficking continues, it is important for the government to address fundamental issues such as unemployment, poverty, and the falling standards of education that seemingly give room for abuse and addiction to flourish, while health agencies and other stakeholders in society have a responsibility to raise awareness of the dangers of substance abuse. The Enugu State Independent Electoral Commission has declared the People's Democratic Party winner of all chairmanship and councillorship positions in the 17 local government areas of the state. The declaration is coming almost 24 hours after the elections. A delay the commission attributes to the fear of attack on the lives of the returning officers who finished the coalition in their various local governments late. While announcing the results of this, at the state office, the chairman of the commission, Dr. Mike Ajogu, says the commission is still awaiting both chairmanship and councillorship results from Udi, Enugu North and Ogu local government areas. Meanwhile, efforts by the national executives of the PDP to unite its members across the country appear to have suffered a setback in Oyo State. It all became evident after emerging factions conducted parallel state congresses in Ibadan, the Oyo State capital. At the Congress at the watershed Old Ife Road in Ibadan, Mr. Kumi Mustafa emerged as its chairman. 
while Honorable Jacob Oyeturu emerged as chairman in the other primary that held simultaneously at the Okeado Baptist School. The leader of the PDP Congress team from the national headquarters, Tundi Akogun, however offered assurances that in spite of the parallel congresses, the party will work to reconcile its members. PDP members and leaders who claim to be loyal to former Governor Rashid Ladoja are here at the Eldifair Road in Ibadan for the State Congress to elect officials who will lead the party in the state after many years of rancor among its ranks. The exercise is being monitored by members of the Congress Committee appointed by the party's headquarters in Abuja, including Honorable Tunde Akogun and former Cross River State Governor Mr. Liel Imoke. The Congress of the Ladoja camp produces Alaji Kumi Mustafa as the new chairman. We started this state congress with give and take. We don't want to lose any, anybody, and we want everybody on board. That is why we don't want to go into election, because we know if one side uh, uh, have enough candidates to win the local, I mean, the state chairmanship, it may be winner take all, and it, it can't help us. Meanwhile, another faction of the party, including the former House of Representatives leader, Mulikat Akonde, is conducting a similar exercise at the Okeado Baptist School venue. The parallel Congress, which produces Honorable Jacob Oyechero as chairman, claims that the mediation team from Abuja had failed to address the prevailing issues. I can give everybody the assurance that we're all together in one party and whatever differences that led to you know some delegates coming here and some delegates going elsewhere will be amicably resolved in due course. Meanwhile, the caretaker chairman of the party in the state remains optimistic that in spite of the division, the PDP will not lose any of its members in Oyo. We have been forced, as it were, to wear this dung because we indeed wanted to carry everybody along. Anybody who is not here, I wouldn't consider him lost, but I believe that he may be too tired to have come across with us. The party is for all of us. We are still one indeed. The roller coaster ride of bickering in the Oyo State PDP may just continue with a clear cut emergence of two factions. How those broken fences will be mended is another puzzle the national body has to solve. When the news of 10 returns, the Kaduna Electricity Distribution Company signs MOU with three companies towards metering 200,000 consumers in the first phase of its rollout. Join us again.